I have made some bad mistakes in my time, but that breaks, and I bet I've had way more fun than you. Hello there again, and welcome to another installment of Kipped uh, Stuff. Uh, I've been doing a lot of sword stuff lately, and I've been having fun with it, and there's one thing I've always wanted to do, was build a cane sword. The problem with that is I had no idea how to build the cane part so the sword would fit inside it. But today we figured it out, so let's get started. I bought this as a pair at a pawn shop several years ago. It's just a decorative sword. There's no dec there's no edge on it. It's all blunted and it's long as heck. And it's got this big ugly cage for the handle. And I've got another one that I cut the cage off. So let's take a look at that. This is the one I took the cage off. It's just a tiny, tiny little tang. It's probably only two inches long with a little bolt on the end of it that secured it to the edge of the handle. Uh, I'm going to use that, and what I'm going to do is take this old broken pool cue and put this blade inside it like this. And for a handle, this ugly dragon head I took off the decorative katana fits nicely over the end. There's also a hole by the nose that used to have a jewel in it that threaded rod can stick through there well enough and I'll be able to put the acorn nut on the end of it to hold it together. And if I do it right, it'll fit right inside this pool cue. So let's get started and see what we got to do first. Okay, to start with the pool cue, it's got a little rubber bumper on the end of it and a piece of decorative plastic. Let's take those off. Okay, that was a terrible way to do that. The screw wasn't in centered, or was it in straight? But it sure was in there. Oh, and that ugly cap was screwed on the end here too, but we won't use that anyway. So, what we're going to do is use a table saw and cut it in half to the full length and leave about... Oh, two inches at the end, and then we'll go for the next step. Okay, so I used a back saw to cut off the threads that were holding that little plastic cover on. And in the meantime, I cut my finger with the back saw I used. It jumped out of the threads. My hand was too close. Did a little nick on my finger, but it doesn't, nothing bad, but it took me five minutes to find my first aid kit. So I can put a band-aid on it to keep it clean. So remember to always know where your first aid kit is. Okay, on to the saw. So, speaking of first aid kits, this is very dangerous. Do not try this. I'm cutting a piece on a table saw with a bevel on it. It gets progressively smaller as we get to one end. And I'm going to hold it away from the fence and try to keep the blade nice and straight down the center of this. It's definitely not something you want to try at home, and do not try this ever. I've actually made some marks down the center, try to keep it centered, justify it, and I've got another mark at the end where I want to stop. And I've got plenty of stick to hold on to, keep my hand away from the blade, but it's still dangerous. Don't try this. straight cut but it did its job now I'll glue strips onto the side to keep the opening 
and there'll be enough room for the blade to stick inside there now. Let's cut some strips. Okay, to cut the th strips, I'll just set the blade close to the fence and feed the strip in in two different directions. Let's try this one. It might even be straight. board that's on top of my radio arm saw table and I put the blade inside the pool cue to keep the width correct and now I'm going to glue in these strips on the side so let's get started Okay, we'll slip the first piece in. Now we use a few spring clamps to hold it together. Okay, that should about do it. We'll let it sit overnight and I'll clean up my brush. Okay, we see here we've had the clamps on for several hours. I'm going to try to cut off the excess here. Okay, and then we'll take the clamps off. night before I put it together it was glued somewhat off here this top piece needs to be slid over a little bit but that's no big deal we can fix that with a file so now I need to fill in the rest of this strip here and a screw up I made on the back side with a jigsaw when I had tried to extend this cut and then we'll cut it off to length And get ready for the next step, adding the handle to the blade. Okay, while well, waiting for the putty to dry, I'm going to clean up the edges a little bit using my faithful rasp. So let's start here.
Okay, that's good enough for now. Okay, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry, or the putty, I cut a series of wedges. And I shoved them into the handle next to the sword blade. And it seemed to hold it pretty tight. Now I'm going to fill the rest of it with a JB Weld type substance. And that should hold the blade in place. It's not like, you know, it's just decorative. This is not a functional blade. This won't be used for sword fights or anything. It's just for looks. And to show your friends that, look, I've got a sword inside my cane. So I'll mix up the epoxy and get it set. Okay, it's about time to cut the pull cue off. And since pull cues are tapered on both edges, or all edges, and the tip is actually the center of the fat end, I have to brace it up on one end to make sure I get a straight cut. So I'll try to cut it with my back saw. Let's see how well I do. Okay, not the straightest cut in the world, but I can clean it up by sanding it. Okay, I finally got the handle dry. Got quite a bit of JB Weld type material holding the tip in there. It's pretty strong. Actually feels pretty good. Now, I'm going to try to fit it into this. I had quite a bit of trouble getting it to fit right. It just didn't want to fit in the handle all the way. I actually had to take a piece of 8 inch flat steel a half inch wide and ram it in and out a hundred different times to make it fit correctly. Still kind of tight but that will keep it from falling out at least. So next we're going to paint this ugly handle. Okay I'm just going to use some cheap craft paint to paint it. I did a test of this paint a little yesterday to see how well it would cover and if the pattern on it would show do and it does really well so I'll just do a couple coats and see how well it looks. Okay here's the dragon head after its first coat still wet so you can see that the detail has come through pretty good through the paint. And I'm considering putting a marble or something in his mouth. Or maybe trying to dress up his eyes. But other than that, this is all I'm going to do. A couple coats of paint and that's it. So while I'm waiting for the paint to dry on the handle, I'm going to do some extensive sanding with my palm sander. There's some detail here that has been destroyed because of the strips I put in there. So I'm going to take the rest of that detail off. And I want to strip all the ugly varnish off of it from one end to the other. Since all my clamps are pretty bad at holding round stock, I'll just hold it with my bare hands. Okay, so now I'm going to mix up, mix up a little bit more of this two-part epoxy. So I can attach this gold piece to the base of the handle. I'll just put it right here on this piece. Part one. And now we'll attach part two. Looks pretty good, so now we'll give it several hours to dry and hopefully it'll look okay.
Okay, so we pretty much got everything finished here. I sanded down the pull cue, cane part, and I think it looked pretty good. I've decided not to grind this part down to meet the handle here. I just don't feel like doing it, and I don't think it'll make any difference anyway. I haven't finished the cane part itself yet. I don't know if I'm going to paint it black or put a natural finish on it, or maybe try to do something to accent this gold. Trying to find a gold tip for the bottom or something to put on here. But for now, I think it looks okay. I do want to do something with the dragon's eyes. Make it a little more interesting. But other than that, I think it looks okay. Sword part looks well. Interesting. Like I said, it's not sharp in any way, shape, or form. It's blunted. It's just for looks. And I've overcome most of the tightness in the sheet, so now it's staying on pretty good. Hold on pretty well. So I'm pleased with it. I might try another one, this time just putting the dagger in the handle, but making a real cane out of it with a 45 degree or 90 degree handle on it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.